Hi, Ben here from Visual Dev FM. In this video, I wanted to show you how you could use Stacker app with Airtable to create a portal uh, that you could use here. And in my scenario, the one I'm showing, is how you can create sort of a check-in, check-out system for Webflow. So if you use Webflow as a part of a team, sometimes it's hard to know who's working and what, like who's working in which project and how long are they going to be there and... Um, you know, that's not really a piece that's kind of built into Webflow. So how can we over communicate how that works? We can use Airtable and Stacker. Stacker is an app that sits on top of Airtable, lets you work with it, um, and kind of gives you uh, authentication and a portal to work with. Let me show you my Airtable. Let's start there. So with an Airtable, you know, I have all these different, first of all, I have my data. I have my sites that would be uh, here. So I listed them out links to open them up in the designer. So if you click this, it would actually open up the project in the designer, the published link. I have a single select field. I have a bunch of those single select. Um, and essentially you can choose is checked in is checked out. Um, then a date and time field, which this is, if you customize the field type, you can see this is last modified time. It comes as a built in air table. It just shows you the last time this was modified. I'll show you how we're using that soon. Single select where we're, we're selecting who's working on the site. So who's the person working? Um, a long notes where you can put in a lot of messages, images of the sites, um, single select two more. So the working in essentially. So I can say, okay, working in the designer or the editor. Um, and then how long will you be working? You know, it's got some varied times here from, you know, short time periods to, you know, longer time periods. Um, so we have that available and some people say like, why not just use this? You can literally switch to a gallery view and you could use this with your team. You know, um, my problem here is uh, for as much as I like Airtable, um, one, there is a cost associated, but two, um, you know, when we get in here, this gets messy as you know, make multiple changes and we see the versions and the activity and this just isn't as friendly. And sometimes when you're in Airtable, you might want to keep things hidden here that maybe the rest of the team doesn't have access to. It's something that they can't, you know, mess with. So, um, so anyhow, that is something um, to, to consider here. I'm going to delete this record. So I'm going to just have these three again. So now I have these three sites here. And then one thing you'll need with Stacker App is you'll also need users. So. Here I have the people who can log into my portal. I've listed their email address. This is the column you absolutely have to have. Once that's added, you can move on over to Stacker. When you sign up for Stacker, you know, it's essentially sign up. Where's your data stored? You put in your email, your use case. Um, you know, it's going to force me to enter this. But essentially, it walks you through everything, all the steps. It's really good. And you're going to end up giving Stacker your API key so you can grab this data, this project table. And then what I ended up with was this. So essentially you can see these are my sites not being worked on. These are my sites being worked on. But if I jump in here to the site settings in the setup, I have two tables, my users, which is what shows me, you know, my users here. And then I can, I can do some things, you know, I can uh, configure fields for these and, you know, all kinds of pieces, permissions and layouts. Um, all, all of this, but on my user settings, I can configure this to where if I put people in here in my field, it doesn't automatically make them, um, it's not like an automatic thing where it automatically emails them and says, Hey, you have access to this. You would have to give them this link that shows up and then you can choose whitelist only. So it's only the people in your users table, or you can actually open this up to where anybody could join. Um, but you get in here and you can sync your tables and, um, you know, in here you can even choose your fields, like what fields are coming across. This is what's really cool. If I had some notes and some pieces I was keeping on the back end, I didn't want the rest of the team to see. I can literally hide that from them, uh, which is really cool. Um, but uh, what you can do is you can create these views. So this is essentially my first view and it's up here in the tab up top. And if I click on the pencil over here, you'll notice that I'm using a display type as a card. You can use table. You can use, you know, one record only, which shows you one at a time. But 
I'm going to use stick with card here, and it shows me I've got an image set as my cover image. I can choose that field from Airtable. And then I can kind of choose which, in this overview, high level setting, which fields show here, like what's important. And then what I'm doing is I'm using, I'm sorting by the date it was last modified. So that's what we're using that date for, that date and time. And then I also have a filter here. A filter is, these are the, the sites that aren't checked in, nobody's working on. And then if I save this layout and just click out, then these are the sites being worked on. And so what, what you can do is actually, I'm going to go back here to this list. And if I'm in edit mode, I can choose right here and I can say duplicate this layout, which is what I did. I just made a second copy of it. And over here, um, what I did is when I edited this, I, I went to the, um, the filter and I said, only show me the sites that are check, checked in. So that way I can only see the sites that people are working on. I wouldn't see all the other things that people, that people aren't working on, like the whole list of sites. I'm seeing the sites people are currently working on. So once I, once I have this, I kind of have this filter here, you can see um, how this allows me to do if I turn off the pencil where I'm not working on this. So sites not being worked on. I could come in here. One, if I'm working on a site, this is real quick, I can open this site in the designer if I was logged in. I'm not logged in. Um, or I can open, view this published site, and I can see the published version of it. So it's a quick way to get to what you're working on. But right here, I also have uh, ability. So if I was going to work on the site, I would say I'm checked into, um, and it's me. And then I could say I'm working in the designer. I'm going to be about 45 minutes. I can say uh, need you know, need to edit X page and fix some images. And then when I save, that gets pushed back to Airtable. And so, but now if I come back here, you can see sites being worked on. Now, if you're working in a team, you see you have this portal, you come in and you see, oh, this site's being worked on. Ben's working on it. He's in the designer. He's going to be there for another 45 minutes. Um, well, that's how long he was, you know, budgeting being there. And then you can see these sites that aren't being worked on. And if we go to Airtable, you can see now checked into. I've got my notes. They're all there. And then when I was done here, I could say, oh, you know, I'm checked out of. I can clear this, right? Because um, I don't need these. And then I'm just going to save it. You can say, you know, Changes made, blah, blah, blah. And then I could save it. So now when I come back to my sites not being worked on, we see we have these sitting here, which is really cool. So then you can take this to the next level by using Integromat. So if we open up Integromat and we create a new scenario, um, I'm just going to start with uh, Airtable. And I'm going to start with Slack. So I can hit continue. And then here what we want to do is we want to start with Airtable. So we want to watch records. So uh, connection, we're just going to add one here. My Airtable connection. And I'm going to grab my API token really quickly. Okay, so I've added in my API key. And now you can see Ben's Airtable. And then base... I can choose, you know, which one of these. I'm going to choose this table because this is the one I was using, or this Airbase. And then I can choose my table, which is sites. That's what I'm going to use. And then you need a time field to watch. So I have a date and time field, which is my updated. And then we'll say date and time is, um, oh, we'll use name here. And then um, max records one, we're going to just bump this up to 10. And then we're going to say, Okay, so now, from now on, we're going to watch these changes. And then I'm going to add another module, and I'm going to use Slack. And so I'm now going to create a message. And I just need to add in a connection. I'm going to call this Ben Slack. And hit continue. It's going to bring up Slack for me. Uh, authorization. I'm just going to say yes. You know, they, you do have access to the Slack community here. And then I can come in here and choose what channel, once this loads, I want to send this to. So I did see create a Webflow check-in public channel. Um, and then so now I can choose the message. And I can say, you know, 
you know, hey, um, and then we can say uh, the user editing has checked into or checked out of the this uh, project um, details here. And then we can put in notes and we can also put in like, you know, budgeted time, how long you'll be working in, all that fun stuff. But then essentially I say, okay. And then so now what I can do is I can click here to run this scenario. Um, and um, you can see here, I do have one operation. So what I want to do is I want to run this once. Um, I'm going to actually come back over here to my check-in and I'm just going to say, okay, um, is checked into, it's been, I'm working in the designer, blah, blah. And so now I save this. Okay. And then I can come here, I can run this once and you can see I get my messages. So now if I jump into Slack, you can say, oh, hey, Ben has checked into Visual Dev School project details here. And so now the whole channel would know Ben's working here and he's got control of this project. So they wouldn't even have to really look in the portal. I mean, they could always look there before they jump in, but then this is just kind of messages. Also helps to know like, oh, you know, so I could jump in and be like, you know, I was planning on, you know, ABC, whatever. And then we might be able to collaborate to get some things changed. So um, there's always that right there, which is really cool. And then in Integromat, you can essentially schedule this to run every 15 minutes. Um, if you have a higher plan, you can you can drop that down to, I want to say, um, um, five minutes um, is what it is. So then you can turn this on. So every five minutes, it's just going to check for changes to your Airtable and post those through to um, post those through to your Slack, where everybody can see them, which is really neat. So um, this is kind of a real easy way to have like a check in check out process process for a team that you're working on. So you can see what's being worked on, what's not being worked on. And then if something is being worked on, you know, who's working in it, where they're working, how long they're going to be, you know, what time this was posted. Um, and you're integrating with Slack, which is really cool. So, um, and then you can also work backwards and integrate a, a slash command in Slack and tell it to update. So you could do all kinds of fun things. The other thing you could do is you could say, okay, when somebody checks in, let's add another table and then use Integromat to add that check-in to a third table so you have like a running log of who's checked into what site and when they did and what changes they made. Um, so just a really cool way that you can use Stacker app to build a really, really simple app, but that's really, really fun. I mean, this was really fun to build. It didn't take very long. And um, like I said, super, super fun to, to work with. I really love Stacker and there's so much flexibility here and so much power. So um, just automatically updating this is a, I mean, it's a really cool way, right, to, to, to work things. So you can see if I run it once again, um, you know, it gives me that message again. Hey, you know, I left my name blank. I should probably leave that here. You could solve for that, but it's checked out. So anyway, um, when you are in these views, though, I don't think I showed you this. If you do come in here, one of the cool things about this is you can drag and drop, which is really, really cool. So, you know, if I want to move this around, I can, you know. I can drag in a new container, um, which is really cool. So I could pull this down uh, at the bottom and then I could even drop in like an embed where if I configure this, I could say, you know, I want to embed this website even that, uh, that we're using. And then you can see, oh, it, it, you know, shows you an actual embed of the site. Of course, this is squeezed into a container. If you pull it out of container, it's full width, but Anyway, just things you can play with, things you can try, things you can do. Um, just a lot of power here in uh, Stacker App and something that's really cool. And I think this is kind of helpful if you're working in a Webflow team uh, to quickly have a way for people to check in and check out of projects so you know who's working on what. So hope this video helps.